in the name of allah today we are going to discuss the stomach but before going to its detail we have to sum up the function of git in which it starts with the ingestion of your food and followed by the mastication then later on the motility is the function done by the muscular layers inside your git later on the secretion of various uh, substances uh, like uh, mucus various enzymes then acids and alkaline fluids and of course bile they are also taking part to help in the digestion of food then there must be hormonal release and uh, finally the chemical digestion or enzymatic degradation of the macromolecules takes place to be uh, into smaller molecules and what happens next that uh, there must be the absorption of these small molecules and water of course into the blood and lymph and finally the elimination takes place of various indigestible and unabsorbed component of your food the digestion of the food starts in your oral cavity like carbohydrates and it takes place by the uh, amylase present in the saliva and later on this continues in your stomach and small intestine and uh, the basic uh, you would say larger component of your food like proteins carbohydrates and fat, fats they are supposed to be now divided into amino acids monosaccharides and glycerides and later on being absorbed into your small intestine now we have to discuss about your stomach which is a mixed endocrine and exocrine organ to digest your food and it also secretes hormones now in this picture you can see various parts of the stomach it has got cardiac end and it has got the pyloric end i will mark it for the convenience it has cardiac end and the pyloric end and in between it has got the fundus and body now it has got the lesser curvature and the greater curvature now in this picture you can visualize that the esophagus is coming and entering into the stomach it has got the esophageal sphincter and what it does it basically when becomes patent it avoids the uh, spilling of uh, hcl from the stomach into the esophagus when it gets incompetent there would be the acidic secretion that can leak from the stomach into the esophagus and the stratified squamous epithelium may undergo metastatic changes and barrett esophagus may occur and uh, the common presentation could be the gerd what it is it is gastric esophageal reflex disease that leads to the acidity in your esophagus and pain in your stomach area now you can see that the mucosa or innermost lining of an empty stomach is shown here and uh, you can see that it is being thrown into numerous longitudinal fold which you call it as rugi these are temporary folds because when the stomach is distended they are gone away and these rugi are made up of mucosa and the submucosa now this is another picture uh, when you see uh, inside of the mucosa or uh, looking into the rugi of that stomach you find small mammillated areas what are they they are the smaller regions of your mucosa formed by the various grooves or shallow trenches you would say it is going to divide the stomach surface into bulging irregular areas and uh, what they do they provide slightly increased surface area and their measurement is 1 to 5 mm there is another very good picture to show the mammillated area which is rather written as gastric area and uh, you can read it well that gastric area or mammillated area here the mucosa is going to be divided by furrows into irregular elevations and you name them as gastric areas and what next that you find smaller gastric pits or foveolae 
what are they they are the surface or mouth of each gastric area or you can uh, visualize it as that they can be started with the minute depressions called the gastric pits i can enlarge this picture for you that gastric area is showing and in between you can find this the gastric pit and this gastric pit is the mouth of the basically embedded gastric gland inside now in this picture again you are looking into the stomach having its various ends the cardiac end pyloric end and the fundus and the body and uh, after that we have already learned that there are these rugi or gastric folds and we discussed the elevated mammillated areas inside now you have to concentrate on uh, various layers of the muscularis externa the muscularis externa basically consists of three layers of smooth muscles the innermost is called as inner oblique and uh, then comes the middle circular layer and uh, finally there is outer longitudinal layer the outer longitudinal layer it is well developed along the lesser and greater curvature of your stomach but is rather thin or absent on the anterior and posterior surface of the organ and uh, what another important thing uh, about the circular layer that uh, this middle circular layer is greatly thickened at the pylorus to form the pyloric sphincter i can show it to you here you can find the pyloric sphincter and uh, we find the myenteric or our version of plexus to be present in between the middle circular and the outer layer it's been said that uh, the muscularis externa of your stomach is showing the most random arrangement of the muscular layer if we compare the stomach with rest of the hollow organs like urinary bladder and uterus or gall bladder stomach is addressing the most random arrangement and if we want to see the cut section on a histological uh, stained st uh, this uh, section you can find rugi i would show you these are the rugi of the stomach and uh, the detail we will discuss later on in this very diagram we are supposed to learn about the four coating present in the stomach so let's get started uh, we can see that this is the mucosa of the stomach here you can find the gastric pit and the uh, mu uh, mucus uh, mucus area of the lumen and what first thing you come across in the mucosa is its epithelium epithelium here is simple columnar and uh, then you can uh, find that this epithelium is laden with the columnar cells and they are called as surface mucus cells these surface mucus cells they secrete mucus and bicarbonate and uh, so we can say that the mucus produces hair is alkalinized in nature or uh, this alkaline uh, mucus along uh, with its bicarbonate uh, uh, which is being released by epithelial cells they have to maintain the proper ph gradient and uh, we also expect another thing in the uh, submucosa you can uh, imagine that it is showing its well vascularity or rich in its circulatory bed the, so this uh, well vascularity and uh, we have mentioned earlier that the surface mucus cells are going to produce the alkaline fluid and these things are what they are doing they are basically protecting the mucosa of the stomach being eaten up by the acid which is also being produced here simultaneously now again in this picture uh, i'm going to repeat that this is whole the mucosa how this is the epithelium 
uh, you can find this is the lamina propria as a narrow strip in between the uh, placement of the glands in the mucosa and you can find the muscularis mucosae these three things are going to form the mucosa then comes the submucosa of your stomach and finally you can see the muscularis externa as a third layer the inner oblique the middle circular and outer longitudinal and finally the outer serosal layer is there showing various uh, the arteries nerves and veins in it now here you can see that this is the schematic representation of uh, the stomach you can visualize that this is the rugi and uh, you can finally see the surface epithelial cells which are marked by the uh, various microvilli but these microvilli are not forming the brush border as that we expect in the small intestine but what uh, they these cells carry inside they have got the basal cytoplasm and apical cytoplasm basically the apical cytoplasm of the surface cells what they are filled with the mucinogen granules and uh, when we have to made the slide it is basically washed away uh, during at any staining and uh, they looks empty and uh, the basal area is uh, having what uh, a special feature they have got mitochondria and uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is in its moderate amount and these cells are basically combined or having junctional complexes you call them as occluding junctions uh, occasional desmosomes are also present in between the cells and uh, what we expect in the next uh, uh, this uh, lamina propria the lamina propria is uh, looking like a loose but highly vascularized connective tissue here well laden with the fibroblasts the mast cell plasma cells and lymphocytes but they are occupying a narrow stripped area in between the glands which are present in your mucosa of the stomach and uh, then what you expect these are the basal region of the basal cut uh, area of the gastric glands then you expect the muscularis mucosae as the inner circular and outer longitudinal the submucosa again is loosely arranged filled with the collagen fibers and adipose tissue as well but is showing its well vascularity and we expect the submucosal nerve plexus or mesonerve nerve plexus there but we do not expect any glands here so this is different from the uh, esophagus in which we saw so many glands uh, in its submucosa but here no glands are there in the submucosa of the stomach then we find the three layers of the muscularis externa and finally the serosa is there in this schematic diagram now we have to again reconsider the glands present in different areas of the stomach now you are looking into the cardiac glands these glands as you can see first of all we have to concentrate that the pit is occupying the upper two third and glandular portion is occupying the lower one third of the mucosa okay what next about it these glands if you consider are simple tubular glands or occasionally occasionally they are branched and uh, after that you can see they are often coiled at their lower end or at their bases you would say they are being lined with the mucus secreting cells number one number two cells we get here are the enteroendocrine cells sometimes occasionally parietal cells are a part of these cardiac glands what they do they contribute to the gastric juice along with the glands found in the esophagus if you can recall the cardiac glands of esophagus and they both combinedly protect 
the esophageal epithelium against the gastric reflux. Now we will consider. Now in this picture you can see the pylorus and here we will discuss again uh, the detail of the glands present here. First of all see that the pit is occupying the upper two third and uh, this is the excretory part of the gland you would say and uh, the lower parts of the glands are occupying the lower one third of the mucosa. So this upper two third or lower one third this is whole area of the mucosa being shown. Now here the variety of the glands is the simple branch tubular glands and uh, what they do they are basically lying with the mucus secreting cells. They have to produce mucus surely and they are also lined with the varietal cells and uh, which are few but so many enteroendocrine cells. These cells are supposed to produce gastrin and somatostatin and they are also supposed to secrete lysozyme. Now this is a picture showing the glands present in the body of the stomach. Here again you can see that the pit is occupying the upper one third and uh, the glandular portion, uh, its secretory parts, its neck, isthmus and base are occupying the lower two third of the mucosa. So this is how, this is how the whole gland uh, is uh, starting from the, uh, this uh, pit up to the base embedded in the mucosa you can see very well.